Um, welcome back to my channel. Happy New Year. In today's video, I'm actually going to be talking about college. I've wanted to make this video for a really long time because I feel like my experience with call like applying to colleges and stuff has been a little bit different than most people and I like I had certain ways of doing things and I feel like that would be helpful to you guys if you're already in college then you could click off this video thank you for watching up until this point if you're in high school and you're going to be a senior next year and you're going to be applying to colleges I would recommend watching this video because I did I don't have older siblings so I really didn't know what I was doing so I kind of figured it out on my own and I'm a very independent person regardless so I kind of figured it out and you know figure out what I had to do and all that kind of stuff so this video is basically going to be some tips that I've collected um and want to share with you guys and you know just my general experience and what I recommend doing and what I recommend not doing <laughs> The first thing that I recommend doing is if you're a junior right now or if, even if you're like a sophomore or whatever, if you know what you want to do as your career path, make a list of schools that you know have good programs that you will succeed in. Um, make a list of colleges that have programs for specific to your career path and that you know you would like to go there. Basically for me, I knew that I wanted to do fashion design like since I entered high school. So I knew what I wanted to do. And I, I knew what my number school my number one school was, so that was obviously number one on my list. But then I also knew that there's other, you know, schools that offer fashion design in New York and across the country. So I added more schools to my list because you don't want to have just one or two schools. Some people do that, and that's totally fine if you know that you're going to get in there, into those schools. But for me, I was just very uncertain of whether I'm going to get into my number one school or not. And, like... I just wanted to have backups, and I had backups for my backups. Um, so, like, for me, my two choices were fashion design, which is what I really wanted to do, and business. My I had, so I, in total, applied to 13 schools, which is crazy. That's a lot of schools. Most people do not do that. Most people do, like, seven or eight. Um, and some people do more than 13. It's totally fine. It's up to you, whatever you want to do, right? But for me, I had fashion design, so I had, like, seven schools that were specific to fashion design and that were art schools and then the other like six were schools for business because I knew that if I didn't get into any of my fashion design schools then I wouldn't have anywhere to go I, but I just was very unsure of what was going to happen I didn't want to leave anything up to chance so I made sure that I had backups for that purpose um so I did was all, I am also interested in business and I want to study business in college the business of fashion but I knew that if I didn't get into any fashion schools I would definitely want to study business so I made I added to my list a bunch of business schools that I knew had good programs plus the colleges in state that offered business for me I kind of ch I altered my list now and then but I made that list in my junior year uh towards the end well not towards the end like before spring break so like during this time but it, last year um I made that list and I talked to my parents and you know we figured out what I wanted what programs I was interested in and what schools I would like to go to and then after you've made that list you can always change it it's not like you know set in cement where it's like this is what you, this is your list and you know it's up to you so you can always change it but it was very helpful to actually go and see the college because you know I again first time doing this, I'm the oldest kid in my family, my parents have never gone through this before, I've never gone through this before, and I really wanted to have all the information possible so that I could apply to these schools properly and, you know, just get all the information that I needed so I knew what I had to do. And I found it very helpful to go on um, college tours. I went to as many as I could, obviously, like, the school that was in California that I applied to, I'm not going to go to a college tour there. Even, like, Rhode Island or, you know, Atlanta like I that's not that's far for me so I obviously wasn't going to go to college tours for those places but during my spring break of junior year my parents and I decided that we were going to put all the college tours in that week as many as we could so we did like Drexel, NYU, um, UPenn, I think we did 
Rutgers. So I think we, we did a bunch of stuff. Going on the website, it's probably easy to use, but I feel like just going in person, being able to see the school and the facilities and what they have and have someone tell you about all the information that you need to know is very helpful. And it just make it's just better it's better to get a clearer understanding of the, the stuff that you need to know rather than being confused and like having to do it yourself i think just and these college tours you don't have to pay for them they're free and you know it's provided by the school so why not just go and do it and i had my spring break but a lot of people that i know um they went during the weekends or they took a day off from school and went which if you're not okay with that i mean just go to as many as you possibly can that are close to you tips for this whole process is just be super organized don't be messy it can it, like you're the one applying you need to know what you have to do so just be organized you're gonna help yourself in the long run it makes life so much easier so the one thing that I decided to do my parents didn't really I mean my mom kind of told me to do this but the number one thing I did was make a spreadsheet so go on Google Sheets go on Excel whatever you have and you have your list of colleges, right? So in one column, just list all your colleges and then the information, the deadlines. This is for the deadlines. So I had a column for early action because I wanted to do early action for a couple of schools. Then regular decision, the application website. So what is it on the school website? Is it on Common App? Is it on Coalition? Where is it? And then the FAFSA deadline. The FAFSA is very important. Just do that as soon as possible. Just get it over with so you don't have to worry about it. Yeah, so I had all my schools listed here that I had early action. I put all the dates for the schools that I was planning on doing early action for. Like, if I'm not doing early action, like, I applied to NYU, but I wasn't going to do early action. I mean, they don't have early action, they have early decision, but I was going to do it anyways, so I didn't put the date there. I just put it for the schools that I wanted to do early action for, and then regular decision for, obviously, all of the schools. The other thing I recommend doing is if you have, like, those big calendars at your house, I already had this at my house for 2018, but, or, I was obviously in 2019 when I was applying, but... If you have one of those big calendars that, I'm going to show you how big it is, like this big, rip it off, rip the months, October, September, October, November, December, whatever, the months that you need. And what I did was, basically, this is for the month of November, but as you can see, I have the important dates circled, I have it all written in. So, this month I was working on my portfolio for my art schools, so like, I had when the FAFSA was due, which I had already done that, but I had, so I made a schedule for myself basically, but I can't keep it all in my head, I'd much rather write it down. It made my life so much easier and so much more organized, I was able to set deadlines for myself because no one else is going to be responsible for you but yourself when you're going through this process, like obviously your parents are going to be on top of you, like, have you done this, have you done this, but you need to be you need to take control of what you're doing and you need to be super organized like i there's nothing more that i can stress than that be organized it helps you so much having the important stuff in red circling the important dates like so i literally wrote here write essays for this college on this day complete upenn and columbia supplemental essays you know finalize corrections for the portfolio finalize and submit all college applications for regular decision so I wrote that all down and if I, you know, so that was super helpful. The next couple minutes, I'm just going to be talking about my art school stuff. So I obviously told you guys before that um, I'm interested in fashion design, so that's what I was applying to school for. So majority of the colleges that I applied to were for art, specifically fashion design. So I obviously had to create portfolios. Now when I was looking at art schools to apply to so I did apply to FIT Fashion Institute of Technology it's in New York and that is my dream school I want to get in there really bad and their portfolio requirements are fashion sketches but for other schools such as Pratt Institute Parsons uh, College and you know like RISD Rhode Island School of Design um, they require um, portfolios that are art based, not major specific because you don't choose your major until the second year. I would not call myself an artist. I don't, I'm not good at it. You can, you might look at my portfolio and be like, oh, well, you, your portfolio is good, you know, whatever. But I mean, I think it's okay. Um, but I am nowhere near like an artist or like, you know, I can't paint, I can't draw, I can't 
you know, do anything. I, I can draw garments and fashion sketches, that's what I'm good at. But I cannot do, you know, like, fine arts. I, that's not my skill set. I just can't do that. So this was kind of scary for me to have to create these portfolios where you have to include fine art work and things like that. But at the same time, they want you to think about, you know, what's the meaning behind this piece of work like that. They don't want a picture of most of these schools. Um, when I say they, I'm just talking about, like, schools that didn't require fashion sketches and required, like, an art, like, a fine arts portfolio. They don't want to see drawings of um, still life for every single piece of work that you submit to them. You know, you submit, like, 12 to 20 pieces of work, and I don't... They, I've talked to, like, people from who review the portfolio. They don't want to see, like, a bowl of fruit and then a bowl of vegetables and then, you know, like, the garden outside your house. They want to see pieces of work that have a message behind them that show that you have conceptual thinking. They want conceptual pieces of work, and that is the most important thing. Um, that they want to see is just the concept behind your piece of artwork because everything has a concept behind it. So when I was going into this, I was like, oh my god, what am I going to do? This is going to be so hard. You know, like I've never done, I mean, I've taken art classes before for fine arts, but I was never really amazing at it. Like I can't even draw a stick figure. How am I going to create fine artwork? And it can't be so life. It has to be conceptual. And like, how am I supposed to come up with these ideas? But I look back at you know, my ideas and the whole process of coming up with them. I'm proud of myself, number one, because I had never done anything like this before. I was totally out of my comfort zone. I was so scared about messing it up, and that's why I literally postponed it for so long. I was like, I can't do it right now. I'm just going to mess it up. I'm going to fail. Like, it's not going to be good. I'm not going to get into any of the schools. Like, that's probably the number one reason why I thought I was not going to get into any fashion schools, like I said before, just because I was so scared to create this art portfolio once I started though it was amazing once I started I'm literally not even kidding you I had so much fun doing it and when I tell other people who aren't applying to art schools I'm like when I talk to my friends I'm like yeah I have to make a portfolio with art they're like oh my god that sounds so much fun and when they would say that before I started my portfolio I was like no it's not it's so scary like I've never done this before like I'm so nervous and I'm so scared like it was out of my comfort zone but once I started it was so much more fun than I ever expected it to be and my artwork is not extraordinary. It's you're not gonna see it in the Met, you know. You're not gonna see it in any art gallery because I'm going to school to learn how to do this stuff, you know. Not specifically fine art, fashion design, but you know I will learn this stuff along the way and get better at it. So I'm not gonna be a professional, and I don't expect my work to be professional. And you know, I don't think the college does either because you're going to college to learn how to do this, right? I didn't know about this portfolio stuff till my junior year, till the end of my junior year really. So like, I was kind of like, oh my god, I'm already so late and behind. But when I was watching this video, most people say that they start, and one of my friends that also applied, they say that they start, sorry, like my arm's itchy, but they said that they started in the beginning of their junior year and they worked on this portfolio throughout their junior year and then maybe a little bit into their senior year, but they didn't want to do it in their senior year because that's just stressful, which I understand, you know, it kind of was at times because you're like, you have to get this done, the deadline's coming up, whatever, but if you're that kind of person who gets really stressed out really easily and just freaks out and then just like freezes and can't do the work, then rec I recommend starting in your junior year. Another thing I recommend for your portfolio is if you have the opportunity to go to National Portfolio Day. They had it in New York, but they have it like literally everywhere. They have it in like Florida, Texas, California, Pennsylvania, New York, probably a bunch of places. And I think they even go to Canada. I think they go to Toronto. Um, you know, it's on a weekend. It's on a Saturday. For me, it was on a Saturday. If you have the opportunity to go because literally every art school goes there, like FIT, Parsons, RISD, a bunch of stuff. Like every little, every school goes there. Um, and it's free. <laughs> you don't have to pay. You just, you don't even have to sign up. You just show up there. And you'll get in the line and just show the representatives there your artwork. And you can definitely get feedback. And so, you know, if you're starting your junior year, your portfolio, whatever you have, just go and show them. Get your feedback. So then when you're working on it, da -da -da, senior year comes up, it's there again go again and get your feedback and you know make whatever corrections you have to make and i did get corrections i'm not saying my work was perfect i obviously got corrections um 
And so I pushed myself really hard to have all my work for my portfolio done before National Portfolio Day, which was in the end of October. I think it was October 26th for me was National Portfolio Day. So I made sure that I had all, most of my pieces for my portfolio done before that deadline. A couple more tips. Um, when you're starting with your portfolio, I think to go to get inspiration, the number two things I recommend, if you can, go to art museums. Um, I went to the Met. I was in a class, but we went to the Met, and you know, I got some pieces from there that I got inspiration from. Also went to Cu Cooper Hewitt Art Museum, got some inspiration from there, and I just had it in my little notebook, and I just like wrote down, you know, the information for the piece that I was looking at. You know, maybe it'll come in handy, maybe it won't. I have stuff in there that ne I never looked back at, but one of the things I did use but at least you can get inspiration and you know look at other people's ideas and you know their process of thinking which I think is very helpful another thing that I have is don't copy other people I know I just talked about inspiration and looking at other people's artwork and you know kind of seeing that like looking at their ideas their process but just don't copy because first of all the college will know Second of all, it's not your idea, and are you really okay with submitting something that's not your idea? Some of you might say yes, okay. But, number one, it's just not right. <laughs> number two, the college will find out. Number three, it's just, you're not going to be original, and the college will know. And you're just setting yourself up for a future failure. Not to be, like, negative and everything, but that's the truth. The thing I want to add was that... Step out of your comfort zone. Make sure you're uncomfortable. Literally, this whole portfolio process was out of my comfort zone for me because I literally don't have any experience with fine arts. But at the end of the day, I'm very happy with the results that I got from my experience with the portfolio. And it was very fun to, you know, experiment with different media, watercolor, acrylic, charcoal, clay, um, you know, paint still like still life if any whatever still life drawing um photoshop just so many different things that i got to try out because of this and i wouldn't have tried it if it weren't for this portfolio that i had to do the art schools that i showed them to they were very impressed not just with the artwork necessarily because i'm not i'm not an amazing artist but they were impressed with the conceptualization of the artwork if this piece was shown to 100 people, what do I want them to take away from it? You know what I mean? So, they were very impressed with that. Not to toot my own horn, but I just want to show you how important the conceptualization of artwork is. How how important it is to be uncomfortable when you're creating the artwork, but, when you're con but also when you're conceptualizing the artwork. Take ideas that other people are afraid to touch and use that as your inspiration. I know that sounds kind of crazy and a little bit out there, but I think that's the best advice that I could give you when you're coming up with your artwork for your portfolio. Social media is such a big thing. You have access to so much information on the internet. And so just do some research. Go out there and find something that excites you and your want to talk about. What is something that you're passionate about and you want the world to know? You know, what are some ideas that you love to talk about but other people are scared to talk about? And use those ideas and that research and whatever you're passionate about to create your artwork because that's when the best artwork happens when you when you're talking about something that you're passionate about and that you know stuff about that you've researched you know that you're proud of so what i recommend for obviously if you clicked on this youtube video you're probably looking for college advice or whatever but specifically for art schools what I did was looked at, I talked about this a little bit briefly before, that I clicked on video, or I googled videos like, um, I google Parson, or not, whatever, college, like, like Parsons, I'm just giving Parsons as an example, but Parsons portfolio lines, and I would look at, I would watch the videos where people would talk about their portfolio, don't copy those people, but I'm just saying, go on to those videos and watch them through the whole thing look at the type of artwork or not the type of artwork look at what they put in their portfolio listen to the tips that they have to share with you and i think i've wanted to make this video for a really long time and i think that's going to be super helpful to people who are applying to like normal colleges and then art colleges like how do you figure that out you know what i mean out and i think that if you follow 
But I did not, I'm not saying mine is perfect and mine is the best way to do it, but I think that the way I did it is very beneficial to, was beneficial to myself and made it less stressful. If you take one thing away from this is to be organized for all college applications and if you were clicked on this video specifically for the art school part, then the number one thing I want you to take away from this is be, make sure you are uncomfortable creating your portfolio <laughs> and hopefully you gain some knowledge from this video that you didn't have before, you gain some tips with organization or for the art schools that you didn't have before. Um, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I love y'all and I'll see you in the next one. Bye ladies!